everyone wants to get rich, but there are so many ways to get rich that the choice is overwhelming. And even after making 25 million online, I still face this problem. Luckily, I know a lot more today than I did when I was starting. So here's how I would get rich today if I had to do it all over again. It starts with one principle. And if you ignore this principle, failure is pretty much guaranteed. You've probably already heard that the only way to get truly wealthy is to own a business. You might also know that most businesses fail in their first year. And in the year after that, most of the rest go on too. I've seen this happen so many times. People start a business, they think this is their big break, they get super excited, but a year or two later, they're right back at their old job, minus their precious time and money. So if we wanna get wealthy by winning at business, we'll need to stack the deck in our favor. That doesn't mean playing it safe, it means playing it smart. For most people, starting a business is like stumbling around in a dark room, hoping to find cash hidden somewhere. What we need is a way to switch on the light. And to do that, before we pick which business we're gonna start, we need to learn the right skills. Now, the reason why most people fail at starting their own thing is simply because they don't know how to do the thing. They can't tell a good decision from bad, and they can't really see where they're going. They're literally stumbling in the dark. And inevitably, because of this, they make a bunch of mistakes which then cost them the success of the business. So here's a quick test. Which is more important? The type of business you pick or how you go about building that business? If you think that the business idea is more important, then you probably haven't learned the right skills yet. Which of those skills? There are a bunch. Product development, sales, marketing, understanding your target customer, even the really fun ones like accounting and taxes. Yeah, there are a lot of skills to learn and there are just as many different ways to learn these skills. Now, the worst way to learn these valuable skills is by blindly making mistakes on your own. It's expensive, it takes a long time, it's demotivating, it kind of sucks. But the best way, especially if you're just starting out, is to get paid to learn those skills. And the easiest way to get paid to learn is to get a job. Hear me out, I know the nine to five won't make you rich, but it can teach you some or a lot of the skills that you will need when you do go out on your own later. But you'll learn them in a much lower pressure environment. And one of my biggest regrets is actually that I didn't start working a job earlier. I wish I'd worked shifts at McDonald's when I was 16 or even better would have been to do door-to-door -door sales. I know that if I had, I would be further ahead today. Not because of the little extra money that I would have made, but because it would have forced me to learn valuable skills much earlier. And every job can teach you something. A basic sales job, that's pretty obvious. Sales is a skill that is never gonna get old in business. But how about working at McDonald's or as we call it in Australia, Macca's? Macca's is a masterclass in how to create repeatable systems and processes. What does that mean? Well, imagine how rich you could be if you didn't need to do any of the actual work in your business, but instead you could just go out to the street and get a bunch of pimple-faced 16-year-old kids and get them to run the business for you. That's what McDonald's figured out how to do. So if you are right now flipping burgers at Macca's, just go around and start looking and paying attention to how much focus there is on process and procedures. But it doesn't matter which job it is, you always have something to learn. So my advice is stop thinking about your salary right now as how much you earn per hour, and instead start thinking about it as how much you learn per hour. And even the most boring sounding jobs will teach you essential skills. When I was working as an engineer, I learned risk management, budgeting, financial analysis, project management. And these all turned out to be super valuable skills a few years later when I started my Amazon FBA business. But what you learn in a job will only teach you some and not all of the skills that you need to succeed at business. When you work at a big company, you end up kind of like a cog in a machine. You don't really see the full picture. You don't see the big decisions that are getting made somewhere above you. So to be able to start a successful business so that you can get rich, you'll need a way to fill in the gaps in your skill set. And that is where mentors come in. There is always going to be someone out there who's already been down the exact same path you're going down now. So while you're blundering around in the dark, they know how to turn on the light switch and go pick up that cash. This step is so often overlooked, I think, because people are just scared to reach out and start conversations. Probably they convince themselves they won't lead anywhere. And I'm an introvert, so I know that that can be difficult. But if you can't take the risk of sending a message to a stranger, how are you gonna start a successful business? And maybe you think that these successful people wouldn't want to talk to someone like you. Actually, I'm speaking from experience here. People who are pretty successful still get a lot of satisfaction from seeing others succeed as well. And particularly if they see part of themselves in you, whether that's ambition, curiosity, whatever it is, let them help you. This is so much easier with the internet. On Twitter alone, you can reach out to pretty much anyone. There's really no rules. There's no one you can or can't reach out to, whether it's founders, CEOs, leaders in the industry that you wanna join, whatever it is. There's no limit either to the amount of people you can contact. So treat it like one big playground. But it's not about bombarding these people, your potential mentors with requests and asks. Find a way to give some value first 
before asking for anything. Just sit down and think about like, what does this person want or need? There's always something. And if you're really stuck on how you can add value, honestly, some genuine gratitude and appreciation really goes a long way. Make it easy for a busy, successful person to reply. So keep the message short and to the point. And if the person does reply and offer you advice, take it, follow through, go and study the topics they recommend, go and read the book, go and do the thing. And then here's the secret, loop back with them when you've done it and share the results. This is the magic part because nobody does it. I'm speaking from experience, basically, Almost nobody who's reached out to me with some request for help. Almost nobody has actually come back and just demonstrated that they did what they said they were gonna do. So if you wanna rise to the top 1% and stand out and get the mentors that you wanna have, just do what you'll say you'll do and then follow up and show the results. And the best thing about connecting with mentors is if you play it right, mentors open the door to a new opportunity. One where you learn how to get rich directly from someone who's already rich or getting rich and you're gonna get paid to do so. This is exactly what happened to the guy who I hired to manage my Amazon business. So we worked together for four years, and in that time, he went from earning about $4 an hour as a 24-year-old kid to financially free. Now, the secret behind his transformation is surprisingly simple. It's actually the oldest way of acquiring skills. People have been doing this for thousands of years, but it's just in the last 100 years or so that it kind of fell out of favor. But now it's back and this is how it works. It started exactly like I just explained. He reached out to me through Reddit to start a conversation. I could see that he had a lot of potential, a lot of ambition, and a lot of curiosity as well. And luckily for both of us, my business at the time was going great. And that meant that I had plenty of work on my plate, so I was looking for someone to help me. So I hired him as an apprentice. This is where things can really start to take off. So working as an apprentice for a mentor is not at all like being a small cog in a big machine. Now you're working directly under the owner of a successful business. So you get to see exactly how a successful business works. And remember, going back to the start, starting a successful business, that is the way to get rich. Except unlike most people, you didn't have to stumble around in the dark. You didn't have to take on any of the risk to learn the skills which you'll need to start the successful business. You just went out and found someone who's already taken on all of that risk and has had it pay off for them. And business owners are always looking for proactive, motivated people to help them scale their business. So after you've built some rapport, ask if they're hiring. And that is how your apprenticeship in getting rich begins. And once you've worked for a successful business owner for a while and learned the skills, which we'll need, remember, now you're finally ready to strike out on your own. Or are you? See, learning the skills is a start, but by itself, it's actually not enough. You've reduced the risk of failure from almost definite to quite likely. But to make sure we get rich, we need to do better. And it all comes down to which type of business should you start? Remember, your chance of success, even at this point, is still quite small. It's probably going to take you multiple tries to get something off the ground. So to maximize your chance of success, you will need a business that lets you make each try, each attempt as quick and as cheap as possible. This is known in the tech world as the lean method. So you'll make mistakes, but each time you fail forwards, you learn the important lessons from each little failure without it costing you much money or time, and you don't make the same mistakes twice. So which business is the best for quick feedback and failing forwards? Now, some won't like this answer, some will disagree, but I think that most people in most cases should start with a service-based business because that business model has this short feedback cycle built into it. All you need is a landing page and the skills to do the job for somebody. By the way, you remember the guy who I hired to manage my business? Well, after we exited that business for eight figures, that is exactly what he did. He took the skill set that he gained while working for me and taking no risk of his own, and he went and he started his own service-based business. He started working directly with clients so that he could use the skill set and just get started working straight away. And then after validating the business, he transitioned to a high ticket product. And now he has a super profitable business. And that's because he didn't make the big mistake that most newbie entrepreneurs make, which is thinking they know exactly what other people wanna buy. The reality is that you only have a rough guess at best. So you need to just get out there and start testing things quickly. Quick feedback is gonna trump detailed planning almost always. And if you're not sure what to sell, then just think about what skills you've acquired and then look around, see how other people are making money from those skills and do that. 
And lastly, when you're considering which business to start, consider timing the market. Everything is just a little bit easier if you're early to a, to a new trend, to a new platform, to a new market. So always keep a lookout for where the tide is rising and generally just try and see a little bit where things are headed. Back when I actually was starting out, e-commerce looked really amazing. I think it's a lot more complicated today. And so if I put two and two together, if I was starting today in 2024, I'd probably learn some AI-based skills and start an AI service-based business. But whatever you pick, congratulations because you've just started your first business. So you're on your way to financial freedom. Unfortunately, starting a business won't make you rich, but it can if you can scale it up. The problem, more revenue equals more work to be done. And if you don't change something, your growth trajectory will actually take you to where most other unsuccessful business owners end up, overworked and burnt out. Luckily, there's a very simple rule of thumb that will make scaling your business a breeze. And eventually, whether you're at 10K a month or 100K a month, you're gonna to need to start hiring other people. This is where most entrepreneurs get stuck. They don't trust anyone to do the job that they're doing, so they don't hire at all. And either their business stays small or it grows, but it drowns them in work. So don't make this mistake. If your goal is financial freedom, time is now your most valuable asset. Here's the rule of thumb to make this easy. First, figure out your aspirational hourly rate. So if you wanna make a million dollars a year in income working 20 hours a week, then your aspirational rate is 1 million divided by 52 weeks, divided by 20 weeks per hour, equals $1,000 an hour. That is your aspirational hourly rate. And second, hire out anything that is worth less than that hourly rate. So if you can hire someone to do part of your job for less money than that, do it. That might sound ridiculous. You'll just end up hiring people to do all the work in the company, right? Yeah, that's the point. To scale your business, you need to move from working in it to working on it. You become the ship's captain, you steer, you don't row the oars. Now, obviously don't go out and hire everyone from day one. Start with the lowest value jobs and then work your way up. The lowest value jobs are gonna be really cheap and easy to hire for. But the key thing is never forget that hourly aspirational rate. Be ruthless with delegating until you achieve it. But even then, you're still not quite done. And see, the goal here isn't to just be a business owner, it's to actually get rich. And I'll let you in on a little secret. Most entrepreneurs don't get rich by owning their business, they get rich by selling it but when they sell it makes a huge difference to whether they end up with a meh payout or a life-changing exit. And knowing when to sell is not easy. Just ask any founder of a tech company during the dot-com bubble or anyone who bought crypto in 2021. If you know, you know. Here's what I can tell you about selling your business for life-changing money. First, you'll never get it perfect. I think it's better to sell a little bit early than too late. If it seems like a great time to exit, it probably is. You probably don't wanna hang around in the game for too long. It's really easy to get greedy when things are going well, thinking that the trend will continue forever. But remember, businesses are risky and nothing is ever good or bad as it seems. And your business valuation, it's just this imaginary number until you actually cash out and make that exit real. So the ideal time to sell is when growth is looking very healthy, but you're out of ideas or even motivation on how to really take it to the next level. Also, the type of business you pick is very important here. Some businesses are much more sellable than others. If you wanna become a business owner just because you love the business, then maybe you'll never sell. So you can start something in something you're passionate about. But for the rest of us, you need to be thinking about your exit strategy from day one. So after all this, I think I've made getting rich sound kind of easy, but you know what is hard? Staying rich. Because once you've made it to the top, you've got to be able to stay there. If you make this mistake though, you'll come tumbling right back down. Take a quick lesson from Icarus, the character from Greek mythology. Eager to escape, he flew with wings made by his father, but he got greedy. He flew too close to the sun, his wings melted and he fell. So remember Icarus, true wealth is not about how high you soar, but where you end up landing. And trust me, I'm speaking from experience. I did one thing wrong and ended up in a very hard landing that cost me millions of dollars. Don't make the mistake I did. Click here to go and watch that video and I'll see you there.